For this next example, I'm looking to find the limit as x approaches 0 of this function. If I plug in 0 right away, I'm going to get something divided by 0, but that's probably not my actual answer. I'm going to have to do some rearranging here. So what I'm going to try to eliminate first, if I can get tan of 4x over 4x, then I'm going to be able to cancel something out. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 4, and I will get the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 cosine 4x times tan 4x over 4x. Now, if I'm just looking at this chunk, this is something that I can simplify into 1. So I'm going to break it into two separate limits. This is going to become limit as x approaches 0 of 4 cosine 4x times the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent 4x over 4x. I know that this one is equal to 1. And then I need to evaluate this one through direct substitution. So cosine of 4 times 0, that's cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. 4 times 1 is 4. So I'm, I need to evaluate 4 times 1. And that is also 4. So 4 is the limit of this function here. Okay, now I have an example with sine. Um, again, if I plug in 0 right away, I'm going to get 3 times 0. So 0 as the denominator, which is what I do not want. Um, I'm going to try to get 6x in the denominator so that I can cancel out sine of 6x over 6x because I know that's going to give me 1. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by 2 because 3x times 2 is 6x. And I get the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 sine of 6x over 6x. Now I split limit as x approaches 0 of 2 times limit as x approaches 0 of sine 6x over 6x. I know that this one is just going to equal 2, and I know from my identities that this one is going to equal 1. 2 times 1 is 2. That is the limit of this function. Okay, this case is a little bit different, um, but I'm still going to try to do something very similar. Instead of multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same thing, I'm actually going to split the denominator into 2 times 2x because I know that there's a cosine of 2x up here, and if I can get something like 1 minus cosine x over x, I know that that's equal to 0. So I'm, I'm trying to isolate that 2x so that I can make that identity work for this case. So I'm going to rewrite this one as the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2 times 2x. Now it's time to split limit as x approaches 0 of 1 half times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2x. This is 1 half. This, I know from my identities, is 0. 1 half times 0 is 0, and that's my limit. Now I'm trying to find the limit as theta goes to 0 of this function. Even though we're looking at theta instead of x, we can just treat the theta like an x because it's just another variable that we're using in this situation. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I know that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. Sorry, not x. We should be talking about theta in this case. Sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I'm going to rewrite that in the next step. So limit as theta approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine theta over 2 times 1 minus cosine squared theta. And now I'm going to rewrite 1 minus cosine squared theta as 1 plus cosine theta times 1 minus cosine theta. And I'm allowed to do that because if I were to FOIL this out, I would get 1 plus cosine theta minus cosine theta minus cosine squared theta. These middle terms cancel and I would get 1 minus cosine squared theta, which is my original thing here. I'm just um, factoring that. So this becomes the limit as theta approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine theta over 2 times 1 plus cosine theta 
times one minus cosine theta. And now I actually have a common factor in the numerator and denominator. I have one minus cosine theta. That cancels. I'm gonna rewrite my limit all the way down here. Limit as theta approaches zero of one over two times one plus cosine theta. At this point, I'm gonna see if I can't just use direct substitution and get an answer that's not in determinate form. I'm looking for theta to be equal to zero. Cosine of zero is equal to one. So I'm gonna get one over two times one plus one. That is one over four, and that's my limit. In this example, I'm first going to focus on canceling out the tangent because I know that one way I can cancel out tangent is by having x on the top and tan x on the bottom. That will equal one when we're looking for the limit as x approaches zero. We are looking for the limit as x approaches zero here. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So that means that I'm going to need a two x on the top, but I already have a four x on the top. So what I'm gonna do is actually just separate it out into two times two x to make it a little bit more clear. So this will become limit as x approaches zero of two times two x times cosine two x over five tan two x. Now I'm gonna split it into my two separate identities. I have the limit as x approaches zero of two x over tangent two x times the limit as x goes to zero of two cosine two x over five. It's a lot of stuff to keep track of here. Um, I know that this one produces a one and now I'm gonna use direct substitution for this one. Um, cosine, well, I'm looking for cosine of two x, x is equal to zero. Cosine of zero is one, two times one is two. So this is two fifths. And I got that via direct substitution. That means that my overall answer is one times two fifths, which is two fifths. In this problem, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of cosine x minus one, which is cosine x plus one. So multiply the numerator and denominator by cosine x plus one, and I get that the limit as x approaches zero of cosine squared x minus one over, and then I'm gonna leave the denominator unfactored, or sorry, I'm gonna leave the denominator factored, not foiled out. And my function is looking like this. Now I'm going to try to get this, this to be um, one minus cosine squared x because I know that that is equal to sine squared x. So that will look like this. I'll have a negative one on the outside and then I will have one minus cosine squared x on the inside all over x squared cosine x plus one. Um, one minus cosine squared x is sine squared x. So now in the, in, the, um, in the numerator, I'm gonna have, hang on, I need to write out my limit notation first. In the numerator, I'm going to have negative one times sine squared x. And I'm actually gonna write sine squared x out as sine x times sine x and you'll see why in just a minute. And then I have this x squared in the bottom. I'm gonna write that out as x times x times cosine x plus one. So now I know that sine x over x as limit approaches zero is one. So this sine x will cancel with this x, this sine x will cancel with this x, but I do need to write that out. So I will write out limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x, that gets rid of this one and this one, times limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x again, that gets rid of this one, times limit as x approaches zero of negative one over cosine x plus one. Now I evaluate. This is one, this is one, so I have one times one times, and then to find this one, I'm gonna use direct substitution. Cosine of zero is one, so I have negative one half, one times one times negative one half is negative one half, and that is my limit for this function.